Dr. Kemi Lawrence, so I'm going to continue Joshua's trauma, part two. So where I finished on part one, and it was getting dark out there in the kitchen, so I had to come back in here. As you can see, the video quality started changing. Joshua arrived in Baltimore, Maryland, and he was staying with a Facebook friend of mine. The Facebook friend seemed to be very hospitable. It was a male and when I say Facebook friend, I mean, you don't totally send somebody to a stranger, but in America and Nigeria, there's something many of you don't know. A lot of Nigerians have children in America, and then they go back home with them. And then these children become grown, and they want to leave and go back to their country. So there are some people who have services where you go to their house in the U.S. and stay there, three months and they'll help you navigate the system. You'll get your social security card, you'll get your driver's license, you'll do all those things. So this is what the Texas folks were about. But when they threw him out and was homeless, he called the police. The police said he should go to three homeless shelters. They were all full and he slept on the street for three days. But I pitched him money for this young man's ticket and he went to Baltimore. When he got to Baltimore, this gentleman started acting funny to him. Joshua did not sit at home. He went out looking for a job every day, online every day. At one point, his mother said, can you check this? Can you check that? Different employers. So I asked him to go and get immediate jobs at places that were union jobs. They pay a lot, but you work hard. You work your head off and all that. So. He went to United Parcel Service, UPS. UPS is like Federal Express. I don't know whether Federal Express is in Nigeria or Africa, but DHL, that kind of thing. So he went to work at a DHL-like warehouse. That's UPS warehouse, the biggest shipper in America. The money was good. It was like 20-something an hour with benefits and all. So at the end of the day, they didn't have a full-time position. They offered Joshua 4 a.m. till 10 a.m., Monday through Friday. So he had to be at work at 4 a.m. every day. I think it was 3 a.m. Yes, yeah, 3 a.m. 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. So for Joshua to get there at 3 a.m., he needs to be out of his house by a certain time. He didn't have any mode of transportation. He brought a bike. So he would ride a bike. Please, I need people from Baltimore to understand this. He brought a bike and he would ride this bike with a helmet all the way from Owens Mills, Maryland to Hunt Valley near Towson in Maryland. I lived in Maryland for 20 years, so I know. This is like riding a bike from Ikoi to Aja. Yeah, that's the distance. So at the end of the day, he will do that at 1.30 a.m. in the morning. One hour bike ride to get to work at three. The warehouse is on all the time. Packages, presents for people, lots of stuff. So his job was to fill a trailer. Is he a trailer? How do you call it? Tractor trailer. The UPS tractor trailer, semi brown, has to be filled with packages as Joshua will scan them and everything. And then once the trailer is full, the driver closes the door, and he's driving that trailer to the airport to get on the UPS brown plane. So he was doing this every single day. In November of 2023, Joshua was coming down Hunt Valley. You heard the name of the area. UPS headquarters is in Hunt Valley, Maryland. It's like a valley and it's a hill. When his bike somersaulted, Joshua fractured his leg and he was broken. Authorities had to help and get him to the hospital and he dealt with the fracture for a long time. He activated his disability benefits and you know, America has this sick time and all this thing they'll give you if you have an accident and you can't come back to work. But there's a federal disability benefit called SSI. So they gave him an appointment. It was almost six weeks for that one. 
And when he got there, they told him somebody had used his benefits. I was like, his mother called me and I said, what? They said one of his parents had used it. This is a boy that was in Nigeria. How could one of his parents have used it? The mother was in Nigeria now for all this time. They discovered it was his father, his dad. So the basic thing was that this young man's disability benefits had been used by his father who owed him 10 years of child support, back child support, and was still collecting disability benefits, claiming his son in America. It was sad because the boy was crying. I'm like, oh my God, now my father has stolen from me. Even with 10 years back child support, this is what Nigerian guys do. They won't pay child support to the children and then they'll be using the benefits. You know, the father maybe activated his disability or maybe he had a disability going on, but he added the boy to it. So the lady said, you can sue him, but he wouldn't be able to get the benefit. So Joshua was without any benefits. His income ran out. The little two or three days they give them, you know, his benefits was not fully activated, nothing. And he had to move on. And that happened in November 2023. But in August of 2023, he was hit by a car on that bike. He mistaken something for the bike lane and it was his fault. He was not familiar with the American bike lanes. He lived through it. He had some scratches in his back and none of the lawyers could take the case because it was definitely his fault on that one. He learned how to do the bike lanes very well and now he's somersaulted. As he recovered, by February, he went back to work, hard working, now had three jobs. All the three jobs he was doing stopped and he picked up those jobs again. The UPS in the morning, the restaurant in the afternoon, the weekends, the Home Depot, a store called Home Depot. It's a hardware store. Three jobs and working hard. And some people in Nigeria are not working. They're doing Yahoo. While others want to come to America and work like that. It's not easy. So Joshua kept working all the three jobs and he managed to buy his first car. $3,000, he bought a used car, a very nice car, and drove it to work. On his coming back from work to turn into his apartment building, a woman was coming at a high rate of speed, and that woman crashed into Joshua. She was on the phone, and when he crashed into her, that was it. Joshua was taken to the hospital. The girl was taken to the hospital. The car was totaled. Both cars were totaled. His investment in a new car was gone. There were some lessons with that car and so much to do with speed on that lady's side. Joshua was not sure of the system in America. And some of those police officers took advantage of him, I heard because it was black and the other girl was white. But at the end of the day, we educated all the people that needed to be educated. And once again, the police said it was his fault and that he didn't yield. And the yielding issue is an issue in America. So he lost his car. He was doing fine, he had some neck pain and luckily for the airbags, it could have been worse. Patrice coming up. What happened to Joshua is what I want you to learn from. Because this is a story I really needed to tell. They'll be doing a lot of stories and just telling you exactly how world is working and what could be suppressed and things that happen in real life and you never heard of or they didn't want you to hear of.